How's it going, guys? It is 10.42 p.m. 4th of June here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for pathology for step one. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical. M-A-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Link to the Telegram group and channel down below. And I'll start the clip. 64-year-old woman. She has six-month history of fatigue, night sweats, low-grade fever. She's lost 15 pounds during this time. Hemoglobin, 10 grams per deciliter, colonoscopy negative. Physical exam shows a palpable left supraclavicular lymph node. Bimanual examination shows a nexal nodularity bilaterally. Biopsy specimen of the left ovary is shown. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen as patients. So I'll talk about this histo as we move through the question. Uh, choice, so let's just whip the answers here. Choice X, excess liberation of IFN gamma, wrong fucking answer. So in the setting of malignancy, which can be inferred easily from the vignette, even if you're not sure of the specific diagnosis, malignancy can cause cachexia, which is liberation of TNF-alpha. Okay, and you similarly can write that in the answer choice as uh, excess cytokine release, okay, in, in the setting of malignancy. So TNF-alpha, aka cachexic factor, IF and gamma, in contrast, is a cytokine liberated by uh, T cells that notably stimulates macrophages in the setting of granulomata formation. It's a long discussion. Don't want to get too heavy on that right now, but you got mac when you have granulomas being formed, you have activated macrophages, histiocytes secreting IL-12, activates Th1, uh, CD4 plus T cells secrete IF and gamma, which in turn mac activates macrophages and we get that loop, okay? It's in my immunology PDF. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hematogenous, hematogenous dissemination, correct answer. This image is showing us signet ring cells. Now you are not expected to know this histo, okay? Just, you assimilate will occasionally do that and the student gets fixated on what the image is. Not so important, I'm just throwing the signet ring cells in here. Now the giveaway that this is gastric cancer, that's metastasized to the ovaries, which we call Krukenberg tumors. The giveaway that this is gastric in etiology is the palpable left supraclavicular lymph node, aka Verkoff node, spelled Verkow, which is trucyosinum malignancy. Now, of course, it need not be gastric cancer. It can sometimes be reflective of other visceral malignancies, e.g. pancreatic. But the very buzzy association, it, the high yield association is gastric cancer. And I've also seen it once for Hodgkin lymphoma on a 2CK question. And then you've got this bimanual examination, which is an OBSGYN maneuver uh, that's showing nodularity bilateral, bilaterally uh, of the ovaries. Okay, so adnexa refers to the combination of ovary plus fallopian tube. So you get hematogenous dissemination of gastric cancer. Uh, metastasis, obviously, and there are different types of gastric cancer, but there is one in particular, the most common type, you will see what are called signet ring cells on histo, which if we look at this image here and you try to hallucinate and say, well, what am I looking at? No fucking idea. You see how there's lots of whitish areas? Looks like there's a lot of empty space here. This is called vacuolization, vacuoles, okay? There is a lot of empty space within the cell, large cytoplasm, that's a signet ring cell, okay? You don't have to fixate on it, as I just said, but if you're wondering what we're actually looking at, it's the vacuolization uh, pattern here that reflects the uh, histo of the signet ring cells. So you can get gastric cancer hematogenously disseminating to the ovaries, and OMG, we call them, we call them Krukenberg tumors, okay? So let's just uh, quickly whip to the other answer choices. Choice C, lamellar body proliferation, wrong fucking answer nonsense answer choice. I mean, lamellar bodies, you do need to know, are the specialized organelle within type 2 pneumocytes that are deficient in neonatal respiratory distress center. So they'll give you an easy vignette of NRDS, and they'll say which the following is most likely to be seen as patient. The answer is just decreased number of lamellar bodies. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, lymphatogenous spread, wrong fucking answer. So in terms of malignancy, obviously you can know that uh, certain cancers spread via lymphatics classically, right? Such as ovarian or testicular go to para-aortic para lymph nodes. Uh, you can just, you could be aware in theory that uh, papillary thyroid carcinoma likes to spread hematog, uh, sorry, likes to spread lymphatogenously, follicular likes to spread hematogenously. And for lymphatogenous spread in general, I would say the highest yield point on USMLE is going to be sporotrichosis 
or even a, a bacterial cellulitis or erysipelas of the hand that will track up to the auxilla and they'll show you an image of an arm where there's either a pink streak or you'll see lots of erythematous nodular looking lesions in a, in a line that track up to the axilla, and they want you to know that that's uh, lymphatogenous spread. Okay, they'll have answers such as uh, angiitis, phlebitis, lymphangitis, and that's lymphangitis, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choisy, myelin, Mallory, hyalin, deposition, wrong fucking answer. So. You need to know that Mallory hyalin, just some weird protein that is deposited in the livers of alcoholics. Okay, it's asked on one of the offline NBMEs, in addition to the lamellar body point that I made before. So it's literally what they do. They just give you a big question of alcoholism. They say, what's most likely to be seen as patient? The answer is just Mallory hyalin deposition. It's very weird. It's very factoidy. I don't know what to tell you. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal makes you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.